Hey guys, I'm Joe, and I'm here to discuss the movie Milk, starring Sean Penn, directed by Gus Van Zandt, also starring James Franco, Josh Brolin, Victor Garber, amongst other people. This is a true story about Harvey Milk, the first openly gay man elected to public office in San Francisco as a city supervisor, and how he was a crucial figure in the gay rights movement and how he was able to further progress the progress against Proposition 6, against the prejudices that were thrown towards the LGBTQ community at the time. Gus Van Zandt, the director of this movie, you might remember him as one of the creative minds behind Good Will Hunting with Matt Damon. This film definitely has a similar feel as far as its emotional rawness goes, although not quite as emotionally powerful as the It's Not Your Fault scene from Good Will Hunting. This movie does in a lot of ways manage to strike a chord with the audience and the viewer, and at the time of its release in 2000, it got a lot of positive responses from people and even got nominated for several awards and even winning the Best Actor Award for Sean Penn. This film, along with Iron Man and The Dark Knight, my top three favorite films of 2008. I'm not even gonna apologize for saying that because I know that certain people I know and certain people out there might not like this movie regarding its subject matter. If you don't care for it, for that reason alone, that's obviously your right and you can feel however you want to. But I think that it's appropriate to talk about this movie in light of Pride Month. And I tend not to talk about political or social issues on here because I know, especially in the last several years, it's an extremely heated and touchy subject. And I do not claim to be an expert on the topic of how gay people are treated in society and how they deal with everyday life. Even though I think we've made a lot of progress on the topic of gay rights, we still have a long way to go as far as getting people to a place where they can really come to terms with it. I think it's important to keep talking about topics like this because we can't just act like it doesn't exist. It's 2022, not 1945. It's a much different world that we live in right now. And having served with some people from the LGBTQ community and while I was in the military, and I even worked with a gay couple in my last job that I had, I'm probably gonna upset some of you guys. I am a supporter of the gay community and I think that they should have just as much rights as the rest of us do. And I'm not gonna make this channel a regular center for this kind of topic because I know it's not always safe to discuss that. Plus I just talk about entertainment on here, so that's really what I do. Because I know some people personally who are part of that community and watch my channel. I support you guys and I love you guys very, very dearly. And as a Christian, I love you guys just like Jesus does. So you got nothing to worry about from me on that one. This is just my own personal stance, and it's one of the very few times I'm gonna go into that, so don't you worry. But anyway, let's talk about the movie. <laughs> I didn't mean to go onto that tangent, but I felt that it was appropriate for me to get my feelings across. So this movie really follows the conventional biopic formula. It covers about maybe, I, would, I wanna say, almost a decade's worth of time, from 1970 up until 1978. If you don't know the history of the story, Harvey Milk ended up being assassinated by another city supervisor, Dan White, who's played by Josh Brolin. And they give it away through archive news footage in the beginning of the movie right away. We see Harvey Milk throughout the film recording something on his tape recorder, talking about certain things that he experienced when he was trying to make his rise to power as a city supervisor. Given the time period and how controversial the topic of gay rights were in the 1970s and how it was definitely not okay back then by society as a whole, I would say it's not too surprising considering what happened to him eventually. And he more than likely assumed that he was gonna have a big target on his back when he decided to announce his candidacy for office. But we see him run for office plenty of times before he finally gets the victory while also going through various lovers like Scott and I, don't know the character's name, but he's played by Diego Luna, who was Captain Cassie and Andor from Rogue One. And unfortunately, due to his devotion to politics, it ends up alienating both of these lovers. But in so many ways, he's able to make a positive impact on those around him. And I think even people from the straight crowd, like Mara Moscone, played by Victor Garber, and he manages to win over his support. And the only one left is Dan White, played by Josh Brolin. Yes. Thanos himself. Not a whole lot is explored about Dan White, although it's safe to assume, based on what we hear from Harvey Milk, that he believes that he was a closeted gay man, considering his strong stance against the LGBTQ community. I don't know the full story, so I can't really say for sure whether or not I agree with it, but having watched the movie in light of that statement that he makes, I guess maybe he might have been a closeted gay man and he was in denial about it. I'm not really sure, but maybe there was more to him than met the eye. But he's played extremely well by Josh Brolin and I love seeing the 
difference of opinions between the two of them and how Harvey does want to try to win him over, at least earn his respect, but it contains probably the most hilarious scene in the movie, like this. Society can't exist without the family. We're not against that. You're not? What, can two men reproduce? No, but God knows we keep trying. <laughs> Speaking of Sean Penn, I think the guy is really bizarre and, if you ask me, extremely pretentious. I've seen the guy in interviews. If you thought Tom Cruise was weird, <laughs> He gives Tom Cruise a run for his money. All that being said, Sean Penn is an absolute wonder here. He embraces the effeminate flamboyancy of Harvey Milk from what I understand, I guess you consider on the surface a very manly type of person. The way he expresses himself, knowing his sexuality, he is not apologetic about it at all. And he's very well-mannered too. Every person that he comes into contact with, he offers to shake their hand. Even though he probably knows that they're not gonna accept it most of the time, he at least offers to hand out an olive branch. And I know for a fact that as someone who tries to offer my goodness and grace to everybody, you're gonna have people that are gonna reject it. And as much as that hurts, it's something that you just have to accept. But the movie does, in a lot of ways, gloss over certain points in time because it has to get to the main point of when he ends up getting assassinated by Dan White. And it feels very much like you're actually in the 1970s with the attitudes of certain people and the way they talk, the way they dress, and the archive footage definitely helps too. I like James Franco with Scott, who is Harvey's first lover as far as we see, even though it is really sad to see them drift apart due to Harvey's constant devotion to politics. But I also really like how he manages to stick by Harvey in certain situations when uh, Diego Luna's character hangs himself and Scott's there to comfort Harvey even though they're no longer together. He still has a soft spot for him. And Clive Jones, played by Emile Hirsch, is a highlight. An unlikely person to be in political office, but someone who could definitely help you get the edge when he's a political activist. We could have a revolution here. I don't do losing. You're so adorable. And we all know that Proposition 6 does get overturned, but the events leading up to it in this movie actually makes me forget a little bit sometimes. And if a movie could do that, even though I know the eventual outcome, you're obviously doing something right. Harvey's massive influence is spreading out throughout the state of California and even all across the country when certain people like Anita Bryant try to push back against it. But knowing how strong of a movement the gay community has now in light of one of them being elected to public office, odds are it was never gonna go away. And what I really like about this movie is that even though it's about gay people or the first gay man elected to public office, it does come off as preachy, but I think in the ways that it's appropriate. Because unfortunately, as I said earlier, there's still a lot of people that haven't accepted the gay community. And I think it's very much relevant to, in some ways, what's going on right now when you see certain gay people being prejudiced against by certain people who don't believe in it or don't accept them. And the same thing could be said vice versa because Harvey Milk never really struck me as someone who wanted to push away people of opposing views because he didn't want to destroy straight America. He wanted to redeem straight America or even Christian America. He says to this one young guy on the phone who's restricted to a wheelchair and it is gay, you are not sick, there's nothing wrong with you, God does not hate you. And even in his talks with people who are straight, Never once, not even a little bit, does he ever talk down to them. If you haven't seen Milk, please, please go check it out. It is so, so relevant and is so worth your time. Yeah, I don't know how else to put it. And if you're someone who's never really thought about this subject matter that it discusses, you might actually come away with it with at least a deeper appreciation for it. Whatever the case is, I think it's worth your time. So those are my thoughts on the movie. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment below and tell me what your thoughts are if you've seen it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.